Bạn ơi, học lơ Bạn ngon nhá Hả, bạn được hả Chặt vả ấy có chuyện ạ Mà ngon như nhục ta Tâm biết bạn ấy là mơ mơ Để cái nhục bạn là mơ mơ Yi Kwan is a Mnang. He has just turned 10. Tomorrow, he will go hunting in the forest with his father, Ma Kwan. His uncle Ma Be will go along with them. Of all the peoples of the high southern plateaus, the Mnang are among the last to go regularly into the forest. They capture a sort of big lizard there, the Varanis, as well as snakes, which they sell to the Vietnamese. Iquan is already familiar with the forest world, but he still has a great deal to learn. In the evening, the village wise man sacrifices a chicken around a sacred jar. He invokes the spirits, the yang, so that they will help and protect his people during the hunt. After long incantations, sharing the wine and the rice ends the ritual. The next day, the three men get ready to leave the village for two or three weeks. On the elephant, which belongs to Mabe, they set up the equipment basket. They take very little with them, just what they need for the hunt and some rice. All the rest will be given to them by the forest. The relationship between the elephants and the Menong is a long and beautiful story. The Menong have always been renowned for their ability to capture and tame wild elephants. Once tamed, the elephant becomes part of the family. A deep mutual respect develops between man and animal, a sacred tie whose origins lie in ancient and mystical history. It all began near a watering hole. Similar to this one, near which Mabe has just spotted a Varanus hidden in the grass. One day, Long ago, the Mnang caught some Varanises. While they were eating them, they were suddenly stricken with terrible itching. They scratched so hard that their skin thickened. It swelled and swelled so much that they were transformed into elephants. Distraught and terrified, they returned home. The other villagers agreed to feed them until they learned to live in the forest. In exchange, the elephants made this promise. Every year, they said, you may capture some of us to help you in the village, but you must let us be born free. Ever since, respectful of their promise, the Menong have forbidden the birth of their elephants in captivity, 
because that would be the same as treating them as slaves, an unthinkable fate for the sons of their ancestors. At one time, such an infamous act was punishable by death. The arrival of the Vietnamese on Menang land increased deforestation in favor of rice paddies. Today, more than ever, the Menang realize the value of the forest, this wild, mysterious world which belongs to them alone. After a long day's journey on the elephant's back, the hunters stopped near a watering hole and set up camp for several days. Ma Kwan gathers bamboo shoots for the dinner. Abe and Iquan do the fishing. Because of the numerous mosquitoes, life in the forest is hard during the rainy season. Nature, however, is more generous at this time. Water is more abundant and so are fish. The bamboo shoots grow at an impressive speed too. Iquan is learning how to cast his net, a technique much more difficult than it looks. Thanks to his uncle's advice, the youngster does fairly well. The fishing is good. Mabe can be proud of his young pupil. A few more apprenticeship lessons and Iquan will be able to fish on his own. Seated around the fire, Mabe and his family are happy to be there, all together. In the space of a few hours, they become nomads again, in the midst of their last bastion of freedom, the forest. The next morning, Iquan and his father explore a large area surrounding the camp. Having spotted a varanus high in the branches, Makwan climbs up to look for it. Uh, 
Hanging on with all its strength, the animal does not surrender easily. Ma Quan is careful, since the animal's jaw is very powerful and he must capture the Varanus alive. A dead or wounded Varanus is of no value at all to the Vietnamese. As for eating the Varanus himself, Ma Quan is not very enthusiastic, considering what happened to some of his ancestors. <laughs> After carefully searching the rocks, Makwan points out some interesting track marks to his son at the edge of a hole. Their direction indicates that a snake is hiding inside. The snake too must be taken alive in spite of the danger this represents. The coiled up reptile resists with incredible strength. Makwan just avoids being bitten, but manages to seize his prey. It's a dragon snake, a species which can fetch a fairly good price. Later in the afternoon, the hunters find an even more dangerous snake. Look closely, Ikwan. This is a spitting cobra. When he is attacked, he spits in his aggressor's eye. His venom is fatal. The only way to survive is to cut off the arm or leg it has bitten. In the evening at the camp, the three overjoyed hunters celebrate the cobra's capture. 
Mabe recounts one of his forest adventures. One day as I was out looking for my elephant, I found myself face to face with a tiger that was devouring a buffalo. The tiger thought I wanted his prey. He leaped towards me, but I was too fast for him. With one stroke of my spear, I killed him, and I proudly brought the dead tiger back to the village. The next morning, Ma Kwan decides to teach his son how to follow and capture a Varanus. The reptile has taken shelter at least 15 meters from the ground. Iquan will nevertheless have to seek him out. The youngster has trouble handling the bamboo pole used for the animal's capture. Balanced on a branch, Iquan struggles to catch the big lizard without falling or being bitten. The animal uses its claws to defend itself, but the young hunter holds on tightly. <laughs> Ma Kwan is happy and proud of his son. Now, however, he has to do the same thing with the snake. ไอ้ตรงปอลูนี่มันกระบราดกับจ่อมีขึ้นมาฐานถ้าคุบมายุบยุบตาแหละนั่นไง <coughs> Iquan is fast, agile, and learns quickly. One day, he will lead his own family into the forest. To complete his apprenticeship, Iquan now has to learn to lead the elephant to his uncle. Before putting the basket on the animal's back, Mabe and Iquan wash the elephant carefully to remove the earth 
with which it loves to cover itself. The Mnong are the last people to capture and tame wild elephants. Everywhere else, these animals are raised in captivity. Once, Iquan's grandfather went into the forest to catch wild elephants. Unfortunately, he died without sharing his knowledge with his son, Maquan. Today, Uncle Mabe is the only one in the family to possess an elephant. He inherited the animal, but he doesn't know how to capture them. It's very unfortunate for Iquan. He would love to have followed in his grandfather's footsteps. The elephant is much harder to manage for the boy than the buffalo an animal he's accustomed to. Nevertheless, he manages, on his own, too. Still, his uncle is not far away, just in case. Mabe knows that his elephant will never be a domestic animal. Treated as an equal, he is simply tamed. Deep down, he retains a little of his wild and free nature. The hunt has been successful. The cobra will fetch a very good price, but only if it's alive. It's therefore important to get home as quickly as possible. Barely lit by the moon, Makwan and his family leave for the village. They know the forest so well that they can find their way even in the dark. Late at night, Iquan's mother is happy to welcome them home, impatient to hear about the exploits of her son. <laughs> The next morning, the Vietnamese merchant comes to Ma Quan's house to discuss the price of the reptiles. After buying them, he will sell them to the Chinese, who use them for making medicines. This trade between the Mnong and the Vietnamese has always existed. It began when they lived by the sea, and it continues today, although more and more of them live on the high plateaus. The spitting cobra is worth more than the dragon serpent, which in turn is worth more than the Varanases. After a long discussion, the three men finally come to terms. Once again, young Iquan listens, observes, and learns. Soon, it will be his turn to do the negotiating. Soon, he will take his own son hunting for varanuses and snakes on the back of an elephant. And soon, the forest will no longer hold any secrets for him. Mm -hmm.